This is just a sample of the audiobook. To get the complete audiobook access the link posted in the first comment. Happy Williams, a former soldier with plenty of stories to tell, who in fact became a great friend. Stop, breathe, think, act. Any minute now, I think a wave will lift me and I'll catch sight of the boat, or the boat will catch sight of me. The waves do lift me, but I don't see a boat. I appear to be alone in the ocean, miles from land, under baking sun, and, as I am gradually realizing with increasing dawning horror, at the mercy of a current drawing me ever further outwards. It's at this point, anxiously swiveling my head from side to side, that I notice a tiny island. Well, at least I think it's an island. It bobs in and out of my view. It's some distance from me, but it might just be swimmable. Well, is there any other option? I don't think there is. So I start to swim. The swim is exhausting. It seems to last for hours and saps all my energy. But, dragging myself onward, I do eventually reach the island. Relief. Except not quite. Perspective has played a foul trick. When I get there, it isn't really an island. It's more a broad, high, steep rock. No gently shelving sand to fling myself onto then, like in the movies. Instead, it's a tall, jagged cliff face, slapped by waves. This inhospitable crag remains, though, my only plausible saviour, assuming I can get on to it. By now my arms and legs are heavier than they've ever been, and I have to use the waves to lodge me halfway up the rock. I try twice and fail and get washed back, and I know if I don't get on this next time, I'm not sure I'll have the energy to try again. One last desperate effort. I ready myself, ride the wave onto the rock, and this time I manage to cling on and climb up. At the top of the rock is a small dip containing a shallow puddle of seawater flung up by the waves. I lie down in this puddle, and then I pass out. I don't know how long I'm unconscious for, but when I come to, I sit up and discover that, well, what do you know? And isn't this just typical? It was all a dream, and, flooded with relief, I'm waking up back in bed with Jill in the safety of the apartment. No, I don't, because it isn't a dream. The bit about being a dream was a dream. I am, actually, and indisputably, on a rock in the middle of the ocean under the still-baking sun. But hang on. My eyes focus, and there out to sea is the boat, plainly visible in the distance. The boat. The instructor is still out there on the bright blue water looking for me. I wave and shout, but the wind carries the sound away, and she's looking down into the water and not looking up at the rock. I'm over here. It's okay. She's got to see me in a moment, hasn't she? I watch numbly as the boat completes a few more silent circles, and then, with a sinking heart, I see it turn and motor away, growing smaller and smaller towards the thin ribbon of the coast on the distant horizon. Abandoned. She's given up on me. Well, now I truly am stuffed. Washed up a castaway. What would Robinson Crusoe do? Seek a source of food among the vegetation, no doubt, and begin to build a shelter. Yeah, well, cheers, Robbie. I'm on a flipping rock. There is no vegetation, nothing with which to build a bijou shack and start a cosy bonfire and very little altogether in the way of possibilities, short of beginning a new life as a cormorant. Again, I don't know how much time now passes, but I do know that as I sit there staring mournfully across the wide expanse of totally unpopulated water, I have time to reflect, 
Just suppose it did end here. Just suppose the clock was now running on my few final hours.